Okay, what I thought might be handy was just to go through a bit of an overview of working with uh, HDV files on Mac OS X. Uh, the first thing I wanted to discuss was getting files into Mac OS X as the raw uh, MP2 transport stream. And uh, what we use is a program available on the Apple developer site. It's actually available from the Apple Firewire software development kit. And it's called DVHS Cap. So I'll just go and bring up the uh, interface for that. Uh, what it allows you to do is when your camera is connected to it, it will be recognized, your HDV camera. Um, the transport control, tape transport controls will be um, uh, accessible and you simply uh, hit this uh, start play and then hit capture DVHS. And what you're recording um, is the raw uh, transport stream to the hard drive. So um, I've done one earlier and we just have a look here. It comes up as an M2T file. If we just get a file info on that, you can see that it's an MPEG transport stream. Um, now the, the advantage of having it in this format is that you could, for instance, burn it to a data DVD-R disk or put on a USB uh, stick and uh, play it on a PlayStation 3 natively to your high definition display. Um, if you have a look at, if we capture it into Final Cut Pro using um, the HDV presets for example, um, they come up as QuickTime files. So instead of being native tra MP2 transport streams, they're just defined as a QuickTime file in the HDV 1080i uh, 50 format. In my case, I'm using PAL. So I'll just go and have a look at uh, the MP2 files. Now you can't edit these natively in Final Cut Pro. You'll have to convert them. For that, I use a utility called um, MPEG transport, uh, MPEG stream clip. Actually, I'll just go and uh, find that and bring it up. So this program allows you to work and convert MPEG-2 uh, files. It's really handy. So if we have a raw file and we want to um, convert it to use in Final Cut Pro, I'll just open that raw file that I had captured earlier. OK, so we've got a, a bit of length here. So what I'll do is I'll just make some in and out points and uh, cut it down a, a bit so that it doesn't take too long. At the out point, trim that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to convert this to a QuickTime file that um, Final Cut Pro 5 can read. So we want to export to QuickTime um, and we want to use this is a PAL video footage, so we're going to use Apple HDV 1080i 50. We want to leave it unscaled so it's not going to convert or, or scale it to a different resolution. Um, Everything else I think we leave as is. So I say make movie. Um, I'll call to it my YouTube sample. Save it to HD1. And that is now going to convert that or transcode that, if you like, over to, um, to a HDV file that can be read in Final Cut Pro. So we'll just go and have a look at. Um, at Final Cut Pro. Um, these are two clips that I've uh, brought in before and these were actually sampled with Final Cut Pro so that they are um, they're playable uh, natively. If we put on the timeline we see we've got no render bars. Um, the reason being is if we check my sequence presets um, I've used the HDV 1080i sequence presets all set correctly uh, PAL uh, and that's being able to uh, play with uh, with no rendering as you can see and we can just grab another another clip put that on the line we can put in our uh, our effects cross phase etc and that all works fine natively with um, HDV um, now if you want to combine um, other formats into HDV. For instance, I have some anamorphic footage that's been shot in uh, standard definition. So I could um, add that to the timeline as well and combine new footage down. Now you'll see it needs rendering. The reason being is this is obviously much lower resolution. It's, as I said, anamorphic standard definition PAL, 720 by 576. And you can get an idea there of how much less information there is in a frame of standard definition versus um, uh, HDV. So the first instance we'd want to scale that up so that it fills the frame. 200% in there. And you can see over here now we're pretty much filling the frame. And so I'll just say uh, 
render. I'm now rendering the standard definition anamorphic footage to the HDV sequence preset and um, it's upscaling it and it, it doesn't look too bad really. I mean it's obviously you're going to see artifacts in it because it hasn't got the number of pixels that HDV has but um, let's go back and uh, and um, play that. I might just put in a uh, press fade or maybe not. I haven't got enough handles on that footage. Um, but I'm just playing the native HDV and just going to cut to um, standard definition anamorphic. Okay, well we'll just go back and have a look if MPEG stream clip has finished, which it has, so I can then uh, Bring that clip in that I uh, converted earlier. This is my YouTube sample movie. Well, maybe, maybe not. Mm, I don't think I saved it out as the right format. What did I? Uh, what did I do here? Oh yeah, sorry. There we have it. So um, add that to the timeline and uh, start playing that back. Obviously no render bars, it's playing back natively and here it is in our HDV. So that's the MT2 raw file that we've just transcoded to, um, to Final Cut Pro using about the same data space on your hard drive as um, standard definition DV did. Um, about 200 megs per minute of um, 200 megs per second is it? I forget one or the other. Anyway, um, using it. So that gives you an idea. The other thing I suppose I wanted to show you is if you wanted to use your HDV clips in a standard definition sequence. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just make a new new sequence, sequence four, and um, I'll load a sequence preset. But for this one, we want to go back to using DV PAL. So just a standard definition four by three. Um, uh, get that sequence up. Now if we get a HDV file and drop it in that sequence, obviously a render bars come up because it's having to um, uh, rescale it into a sequence that doesn't match the original footage. It's letterboxing it by, by, uh, by default. Um, so I'll just go ahead and render that. And there's two ways we can deal with the footage. We can obviously have it uh, letterboxed in a 4x3 frame if we weren't using anamorphic. It would probably be best to actually create a sequence which was anamorphic to use this. Um, so we can play it back as, um, as letterbox. Or we can use the extra resolution we've got in HDV and actually scale it up if we, for some reason, needed, wanted to stick with a 4x3. So if I go to motion at the moment, it's 50% reduced, so we'll just go back up to 100. And as you can see here, we've now filled the 4x3 frame. And for instance, we can uh, uh, we can move around that frame. So the action's at the uh, top of our screen. We can sort of place it. You know, we want to keep that uh, action in the screen. Render that again, and uh, we fill the 4x3 frame with the uh, with the action of HDV footage. Why you want to go back to this, I don't know. But if most people are still producing standard definition uh, DVDs, so we've got good crystal clear 4x3 out of a HDV camera. And the other thing I guess is you would normally be creating a new sequence which is anamorphic. So if I just go back and uh, check that now, um, sequence preset should be dvpal anamorphic, anamorphic, I think I need to leave that. I think this is the first time I've actually done this. Um, so if we get one of our clips and add that to, yeah, that's looking good. So we've got the HDV footage being rescaled to standard definition, but anamorphic, which will be right for widescreen displays. So there you have a couple of different ways of, uh, of working with uh, HDV footage on a Mac.